Hey, what's up you guys? It's Judy here with my life as Geek Eye. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you join the Geek Eye family. And if you're returning here to my channel, then welcome back. Today's video is gonna be episode number two in my series, Ask Judy. So I've just filmed part one. I have had such an amazing response and questions that people have submitted to me to answer in this series. So if you guys have have any further questions that you want to know the answers to what I think about them then leave them all in the comment section down below and I will answer them in episode three of this series so basically what this series is you guys can ask me any questions that you like anything that's on your mind whether it's about cooking whether it's about makeup relationships life thoughts personal opinions anything that you guys want to know leave those questions in the comments down below and we will have a conversation about everything that is on your guys's mind here on my channel my hope and aim is to entertain educate and enrich your life so in whatever way that I might be able to do that for you guys then just let me know leave those questions in the comments below and let's hopefully keep this this series going so in today's video I'm going to be answering more questions that you guys have asked me in the comments of my introduction video for this series so before I go fluffing along any further if you guys do enjoy my videos then please be sure to give this one a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already I do put new videos out every Monday Wednesday and Friday so you can turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those future uploads you can also follow me on my social media Facebook Instagram and Twitter all of them are live as geek guy and on all of these socials you guys can DM me comment Leave any and all of your questions on those social medias. I see your messages most of the time, I think. If I don't see them, it's probably because they didn't come through. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to keep on answering you guys' questions. Okay, the first question for today's video is from Velma Velma. This lady is a lovely subscriber here on my channel. She is very active on my videos. You've probably seen her comments in the comment section of every single one of my videos. So I really appreciate that she takes her time to ask me questions. I really appreciate you, Velma. Your question is, your ethnicity is Filipino and you live in Australia. Do you ever face any challenges regarding the same? If you're talking about racism, then no, I have actually been really lucky with the experiences that I've had in my life I've probably really only encountered racism a couple times in my life one was when I was a kid and we were at this park climbing a tree and some other kids passed by and they screamed out climb trees in your own country or something like that and I was like I, I didn't really know what they meant because I never really encountered racism and my dad was like oh just ignore them they don't know what they're saying and Growing up, thinking back about that, I was like, oh, okay, there were some really racist kids back then. In more recent years, I haven't really experienced a lot of racism towards me being Filipino living in an Australian country, but Australia is becoming vastly multicultural, and so, so to encounter someone of a different ethnicity walking down the street isn't anything weird or strange. Probably the only type of racism that I have received from people would be maybe more like innocent questions like, oh, the girl that works at the other cafe down the road is she your sister? And just like, just because we're both Filipino and we're both Asian doesn't mean that we're actually related. That's probably the only kind of racism that I've experienced, but it's more like an innocent kind. Or a, another encounter that I've had would be at a previous job of mine, a lady was speaking to my boss and she was like, I want to talk to that Chinese girl over there. And my boss was like, she's not Chinese, she's actually Filipino. Just because she's Asian doesn't mean she's Chinese. <laughs> Like, I just thought it was funny. A lot of the racist encounters that I've had with people would be older white people, and I'm not saying that in a negative sort of way at all. They just come from older white people who have grown up in an era where it's predominantly white people here in Australia. I don't know, I guess that's just what they've grown up with. It doesn't excuse racism in a way, but I don't think that they meant it in any negative sort of way. So no, I've been extremely fortunate in my encounters with people here in my life. Uh, Velma says, I hope I'm able to ask my mind. You guys, this series is for you. You can ask me anything that is on your mind, absolutely anything. I'm here to answer your questions. MC29 says, how do you stay happy and positive in life? Well, girl, if you only knew, there's a lot of things going on in my personal life right now. And if you only knew what exactly those things are, then you would be like, how are you still smiling? How are you even getting out of bed? And honestly, for me, it's just a matter of understanding that whatever is going on in your life is not anyone else's responsibility. Like when I go to work, 
I go to work and I try and leave my problems at home. I try not bring them to work and let my depression or my anxiety or my personal life problems, I try not to let them affect other people or take them out on other people. Just for me, trying to stay happy and positive in life is a mindset, it's a lifestyle, it's a way that you engineer your thoughts. For me, staying happy is part of an action that I need to choose to do every single day. Like this morning, I did not want to get out of bed. <laughs> I just wanted to stay in bed and cry all day long, but I knew that wasn't healthy for me. I knew that I needed to get up and get on with it, film some videos for you guys, and put this content out there for you because I know that being able to help someone else will make me happy as well. So that's why I just keep on picking myself up and getting out there and getting on with life and knowing that getting on with life is a healthy way to live. Don't let yourself wallow in sadness or fear. I mean, there is a time and place for these things and these are perfectly natural emotions for any human being to feel, but to let yourself dwell in a negative place is not good for you at all. So for me, trying to stay happy and positive in life is a choice. It's something that I have to choose to do every single moment of the day. So I hope that answers your question. MC29's next question is, what is your least favorite makeup? <laughs> well, if you've watched any of my makeup destruction videos, then the makeup that I destroy in those videos is either my least favorite makeup, makeup that is really, really old and expired, or makeup that I really don't use and has no resale value whatsoever. If you've seen my Kmart makeup video here on my channel, then that is probably the worst makeup that I have ever tried ever. So my least favorite makeup is Kmart makeup. It's cheap for a reason and it's nasty. I mean, that, that don't even put that shit on your face. Angie on YouTube asks me, do you ever get jealous of other YouTubers who have stupid channels and somehow have more subscribers than you? No shade. Honestly, my answer to this question is no shade at all whatsoever. But yeah, I guess just the fact that it, it is a question means that it's a natural reaction to have. It's a natural reaction for me to think, what am I doing wrong? I put so much effort and I try and be positive and put good vibes into my videos and I'm not growing as quick as some of these channels that swear and do crappy things on their channels and just make stupid jokes and don't put any effort into their editing or video quality or anything like that. I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? What do you guys want to see? Do I have to like get my tits out on, on video camera or something just to get the views and get the subscribers? Yeah, sometimes I do wonder that. Sometimes I think, well, what's the point then if these people are doing stupid shit on the internet and I'm here trying to put quality videos out for you guys and, and I'm not as big as someone else who's not really doing anything on their channel. But you know what? I'm an individual. I will keep on doing what I'm doing and hopefully it gets me somewhere. You know, hard work always pays off. It's natural for me, I think, to sometimes compare myself to other channels, but with all the hard work that I'm doing here on my channel, it's not a very healthy mental place to be to constantly compare yourself with someone else. So I'm just gonna keep on keeping on and doing what I'm doing and uh, don't mind what anyone else is doing because their journey is their journey and my journey is my journey. So um, yeah, that's the that about that. <laughs> That was a good question though. I love that question. That was like a juicy ass question. Mitrini, hey girl. This lady is so active on my YouTube comments. Like she watches all my videos. She comments on all my videos and I really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. So her question is, what is something that you suggest that someone does at least once in their lifetime? Think about one thing that scares the absolute living daylights out of you and do that. That's what I suggest you do at least once in your lifetime. Now in part one of this video, I talked about how public transport gives me really bad anxiety. That's one thing that I'm going to do. I know this question is probably more asked with the thought of something that's really, really good that you gotta do at least once in your life. But I mean, this is how I interpreted this question. And I think that whatever scares you the absolute most it's, that fear is something that you're gonna have to face at least once in your life. And once you've done it, then the reward will be huge. You'll be like, yeah, damn, girl, you did that. And I'll be like, yeah, I did that. I got the strength to do that. I'm a awesome. I'm awesome. And I don't know, just the, and I've done that recently in my life as well. I, there was something that I was afraid to do. I went and faced my fear and I went and did it. And afterwards I was like, damn, girl, you strong, girl. You got this. Like I mentioned in my first video, taking public transport gives me really bad anxiety. That is something that I'm going to do and I'm going to face that fear and I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to have a massive freak out on the train, but 
you know what? I'm gonna do it. And probably to answer that question the way that it was actually meant, what is one thing that you need to do at least once in your life? I think you should go glamping, but like an adult glamping. So find a significant other or someone that you just wanna hang out with for the weekend that you're comfortable with. Go glamping and just be naked out in nature. That is the most awesome feeling ever. It's a really freeing feeling. So yeah, that's, that's my cheeky answer to that question. Joanne Finlayson asks, do you have any tips on how to repair broken eyeshadow? There's a lot of products out there actually that you can use to repair broken eyeshadows. There's this one called, it's a foaming thing that you spray on top of your broken eyeshadow and then you press it back down into the pan and then when it dries your eyeshadow is like meant to be as good as new. I have done that before. I've used a mixing medium that I just bought off eBay or I just used 99% rubbing alcohol and with my broken eyeshadow I just sort of like let it sit in the pan. I poured some alcohol over the top and sort of pressed it down and then when the alcohol dried the, the makeup was just sort of like adhered together again and it was good as new so I don't know maybe that's something you could try it's not really a very complicated process it's a, it's quite a simple thing to do actually to fix broken eyeshadow hope that answers your question Joanne okay so the rest of the questions that I have in this video are actually questions that were asked me on my Instagram so on my Instagram story I put out that sticker where I was like ask me anything or ask Judy anything and these are the questions that I got from that uh, someone here asks me can I take you out to dinner yeah sure that'll give me a free feed you can take me out to dinner anytime I like going out for dinner it's fun I don't have to cook someone else washes my dishes and oftentimes the people that I go out for dinner with is pretty good company so sure you can take me out to dinner question number two who would win in a fight between a shark and a bear it depends on the environment. Are they fighting in the forest or are they fighting in the ocean? Now you got my mind going. I'm trying to envision every single scenario. <laughs> well, if they're fighting in the ocean, obviously, obviously, the shark's gonna win. If it's in the forest, then obviously, the bear's gonna win. The shark would probably just die from oxygen. The next question, if you could go back in time and give the past you advice for future you, what would you say? would say make better decisions but then again hindsight is a wonderful thing that doesn't show its head until you've gone and done things that you probably regret later on so I guess I would just say I don't know be wiser yeah like I said, be, make better decisions think about things don't force things that aren't meant to happen I would probably say more encouraging things like you got this more positive self-affirmation you are a beautiful person you are stronger than you might realize you are gonna get through this you're not always gonna be sad you're gonna smile and be happy again I did a post on Instagram not that long ago about a diary entry that I had written exactly eight years ago and I discovered that diary entry funnily enough exactly to the day eight years later and I was going through a hard drive of mine and cleaning out some old files and I found this old diary post it was me venting in this diary post about am I ever gonna be happy again my title was one year from now am I ever gonna be happy again am I ever gonna smile again what's gonna be my life one year from now I think it was eight years later I just wanted to reach back and give young me a hug and be like girl you got this you're probably gonna make some decisions in your life that you'll wish later on that you didn't but you're gonna learn from them you are gonna be a stronger person from all of these life lessons as long as you allow yourself to learn from all the pain that you experience in your life let's be realistic everybody will experience pain but it's up to you to choose on how you respond to the pain in your life if you allow yourself to be a victim if you allow yourself to get down about it and just be like oh this happened to me you allow those difficult and painful things to define you then that's when they have defeated you but if I could reach back and tell past me that I was gonna experience all of this pain and heartbreak in my life, I would be like, you're gonna get through this, you're gonna experience this, but you're not gonna allow it to define you. You're gonna take those experiences, take them by the balls, and let them form you into a stronger and a better person. Yeah, that's probably what I would tell past me. The next question is, what has been your greatest achievement? Whew. I'm looking to buy my first home and I think my greatest achievement to date oh I haven't bought the home yet but my greatest achievement is the fact that I have been able to single-handedly save up a deposit enough to be able to buy my first home what a lot of people pay off in rent is enough to pay off a mortgage especially if there's two people in the relationship paying but where most people get stuck is the fact that they can't save up 
a house deposit like a decent amount of a deposit to be able to actually purchase a house what i feel like is probably my greatest achievement is the fact that i have been able to save up this house deposit where i actually can go and buy my first home so i'm pretty proud of myself about that it isn't a question but someone says you cutie oh thank you <laughs> i try and be cute sometimes okay another question here is top five bachelor meals that can be cooked in one pot well one is curry whatever kind of curry you desire number two is usobuko chuck some usobuko in the pot put in some celery onions carrots salt and pepper put a bit of chicken stock or beef stock or whatever you like in there and just let it cook just let it cook until the beef falls off the bone chuck in some potatoes put in some cabbage in there and let them cook it all together and that is a really really good one pot meal so that's two another one pot meal would be soup i absolutely love soup any kind of soup i could eat soup on 45 degree day here in australia and i have done it before i have eaten soup on a really really hot day that's how much i love soup you cannot go wrong with soup have i said how much i love soup yeah i like soup <laughs> so that's three um number four I can only think of three. But then there's a whole lot of different varieties of soup you could make. There's pumpkin soup, there's potato leek and bacon soup, there's minestrone soup, there's chicken and noodle soup. I mean, there's so, so many soups that you could make. A lot of these one pot meals are probably more winter meals. I'm trying to think of a nice summer meal that you can make in a one pot, but I don't think that there is very many. Sorry, not much help there. <laughs> Someone asks me on Instagram, are your feet ticklish? Well, not only are my feet ticklish, every single part of my body is ticklish. Like if you go like if you go like this here or just like touching in a certain area, just like the middle part of my back spine is so ticklish. If you go like this in the middle of my back, I will just like convulse and be really ticklish. I don't have any pants on. The calves of my legs just like here are really really ticklish. Probably the only kind of soft touching I like is on my neck, on my chin here, and on my actual head. But oh my goodness, I am ticklish everywhere. I'm so freaking ticklish. So um, yeah, I don't have as many answers to question in this episode 2 of my Ask Judy series. But again, I want to say a huge massive thank you to everybody who has asked me questions here on my channel and on my Instagram. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate and I love the interaction that we have together. Again, if you have any other questions about anything in your life, decluttering clothes, fashion, makeup, lifestyle, relationships, cooking, any of that sort of thing, anything and everything you guys want to ask me, then definitely please leave them in the comment section down below. Let's have a conversation. I really want to keep these series going here on my channel and it's really all up to you guys. If this is what you want to see, then ask those questions and I will keep on making these videos for you. Again, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, three times a week, so you can turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those future uploads. You can also follow me on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of them are Life is Geek Guy. And you can DM me your questions on any of those social platforms as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate that you've chosen to spend your time here with me today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Well, because I... So, it's just... I gotta go... I gotta know. Right now, it's... Everyone... It, it's good. It's good. It's good. Ever. It is such a... It, it is a good feeling. It's a really freeing, I don't know, politics, 